to the Beyond Cinema magazine, Celebs.com lounge here at the Toronto International Film Festival, Rowan Adderley. Um, congratulations on the film Wasteland. Mate, it's, 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 it's weird, like if you look you up on IMDb or something, you see you've done a short film and then this. Yeah. How's it managed, how did you manage to do that? It seems like what would be an absolute dream for most people to go for your first film. Yeah, um, it was with great difficulty. Uh, to be honest with you, it's, uh, um, it took a long time to raise the finance. Actually, making a short film was part of that. You know, I'd written the script and uh, we were getting a lot of hugely positive response to the script. That doesn't always materialize in, you know, kind of the dream scenario of, uh, um, you know, instant financing. Let's face it, you know, you're still, uh, you know, as an unknown quantity, you're just a risk for people. And uh, even at a low budget, um, you know, we're still talking a million pounds, you know, kind of. You know, a million and a half dollars, uh, and uh, in the real world, that's a hell of a lot of money. And so, you know, it's you got to work hard to get people to, to trust you with that kind of money. So it did take a little bit of time, you know, to get it. Uh, you know, it looks like it's just you know a quick jump from A to B, but uh, there's a lot. Um, yeah, just you know, a bit of a journey behind the scenes there. But um, still, even if it was a lot of work, uh, it is actually a dream come true, like you say. So was there a point at which, like you said, the the screenplay? Obviously, there's a lot of words on the page, a lot of dialogue in the film. Um, reflecting on these guys' mateship and the way they interact with each other. So was there pressure on you at some point to sell the screenplay and maybe let some other director take, take the reins? Uh, it came up a few times, um, but I, actually, I, I, mean, I wrote it to be made on a low budget and the reason I wrote it to be made on a low budget is so I could direct it. I mean, you know, you can write a completely different um, screenplay. You know, you can write something set on, you know, a distant planet, you know, create a whole new world, make Avatar. If all you're going to do is, you know, set a, 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 you know, set a laptop and uh, write a script and you're not going to direct it, you don't have to worry about financing, you know, the sky's the limit, but, um, you know, the challenge of writing it was writing something that I thought would appeal to an audience, and hopefully it does, um, you know, appeal to uh, financiers because they can make, you know, money back, but um, be made uh, cheaply enough that I could direct it, you know, and still be passionate about it, you know, it's not all, it's not all a mercantile affair, but, you know, you do have to consider these things, but, you know, I absolutely did write it. Uh, to direct, so it never occurred to me to not direct it. You know, it didn't matter, you know how long it took to make it. Um, was it always set in Leeds and Portsmouth and that area? Uh, well, it's uh, um, actually we shot a, a, a scene in Portsmouth that was more just a you know a pickup that was uh, um, in there, but uh, it was always set. That's you know kind of in Leeds. Um, I set in my hometown of Barnsley, which is uh, 15 miles away, but um, I'm quite ambiguous with that. You know, I don't actually specifically name um, you know specific estate in Barnsley or. Uh, um, housing project um, anywhere in North America, um, you know, but it was, uh, it was always going to be set in the Yorkshire area. Um, so, you know, it's a fictitious um, estate where it is, but yes, it was always going to be in the Yorkshire area. It was always going to be, you know, close to home for me. Uh, when I was in Cannes earlier this year, it seemed to me that everyone within the UK film system was almost jealous of Yorkshire for having funds available and going elsewhere and getting some funds in. Were you able to kind of tap that, that advantage that Yorkshire's been, been kind of strategizing on? Actually, no. We, uh, uh, the timing was just was actually just off for that. The, uh, the finance that uh, you'll be talking about, uh, that you're talking about in Cannes, came up literally uh, after we'd already closed our financing. Um, you know, there was rumors that it might be coming up, but, you know, these things are always discussed like that. And uh, so, you know, we you know, had the financing in place. And uh, even though, you know, it's very attractive to get that kind of money for anyone, uh, uh, you know, in the industry, you know. Uh, you know, to get regional funding, but um, we just, you know, we locked the finances in already, and uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's better, the, it's better taking what you have in hand. Um, but, you know, it is amazing that, you know, Yorkshire does have this fund available, because what they do have is um, a brilliant crew, uh, just a absolutely fantastic crew. They've got um, just amazing locations for anyone who wants to shoot there, and they've got amazing facilities, you know, from the studios, you know, we shot in. Um, to the equipment houses, places like you know, Provision, places like you know Prime Studios. It's uh, um, it's it's fantastic for the city and fantastic for the industry up there that um, they do have this money and that more things can go there now. So talk me through. Okay, so you're you know it's your first time feature. You're kind of getting all this trust on board to make this movie, approaching guys like Timothy Spall and Luke Treadway to play these roles. Um, what's that first meeting like with these guys? Do you send them a script and wait for a response, or do you try and get them into a coffee shop and have a chat? Well, with uh, Tim Spall, who I'd wanted from a very, very early stage, um, we just sent him the script. Uh, you know, we've got a great casting director, uh, Matt Weston, and uh, when I say we, uh, you know, I talk about myself and uh, the producer Gareth Pritchard. Uh, later, uh, with the producers, uh, um, Matt Pino and Ed Barrett. Um, but, you know, we just sent 
turned the script and very quickly his agent just to said, yeah, he read it, he loved it, uh, he's, he'll do it. Um, just, you know, try and work it in his very, very busy schedule. Um, but, you know, it was, yeah, it was just, you know, <laughs> that was kind of, that was a great phone call to get. Um, then with the other guys, we, uh, um, you know, there was actually a great response from all the agents um, about, you know, putting their clients forward. We were looking for a very young, uh, up and coming cast, you know, to, uh, for the characters. And so we had something of a pick of people. I mean, you know, Luke was, you know, always kind of, you know, top in our list. Uh, Iwan was also Gerard. Uh, Jared Kearns, uh, sorry, uh, was um, was actually cast a little bit earlier than the uh, rest of them, um, but we, you know, we auditioned um, anyway. But you know, these guys were, you know, kind of our uh, our first choice, and it turned out that you know after we auditioned them, they were, you know, they were great for the roles, and you know, we paired them up with each other, and uh, yeah, you know. What do you do? Do you take them like as? I mean, music plays a big part in the film as well. Do you take them like some tracks, get them in some sort of once they cast, like to kind of set them, set the pace and set the mood? Because the film has a very specific pace to it. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what do you do in that in that way as a as a young director? Well, I mean, we talk about the kind of music that you know uh, each character would listen to. You know, we uh, and that, to a certain extent dressed accordingly to that. You know, I mean, I think the music, particularly in young people, the music that you're into has to a certain extent with certain people it kind of dictates you know, your clothing style your style of person you know uh, um, and so you know it was yeah that, that was the kind of thing that we discussed from a you know very a very early stage you know just when we were just you know shaping the characters yeah it feels very British the film um, is that because your influences are British directors and things like that or I mean but what I what I really appreciated is unlike other kind of heist movies because it it is technically a heist movie. There is so much character development for not just Harvey, but for Charlie as well, and and some of the other guys. And you really do get it. the film does slow down enough at times to allow you to appreciate the bonds between these guys and you know some of their girlfriends. Mm -hmm. So so I mean, if you look at the Guy Ritchie movies, they've got all the action, all the fast pacing. Very rarely do they pull the camera back and allow you that time that you've inserted in this thing. So who is it and who are they, those people that have kind of influenced the now for you? Um, I wouldn't actually say this necessarily simply, uh, you know, British cinema. Um, I mean, uh, you know, I had kind of a, and that concedes the word, but, um, you know, the theory behind, you know, making it was that I wanted to make a heist film, which, you know, traditionally is kind of the, you know, almost like a Hollywood fantasy and ground it within the, uh, you know, context of what would be a realist cinema. Um, you know, a council estate in Leeds, and you know, I suppose Verite Cinema is very much, you know, very a British thing. Um, well, not very much a British thing at all, but you know, we do have uh, a lot of famous um, and a lot of successful, you know, uh, Verite filmmakers. People like Ken Loach, people like uh, uh, you know, Mike Lee, Shane Meadows, things like that. And so, yeah, there's a certain extent, you know, there. But I mean, it's very heavily inspired by American cinema as well. You know, I mean, uh, um, anything from, um, you know. Dumb identity, you know, like just on, you know, I mean, just all the highest films, you know, great crime films of the genre. I mean, there would be too many to, too many to list, uh, really speaking. <laughs> yeah, for a long there time. was one scene where, where Luke's walking into the club where I really felt like it was kind of Darren Aronofsky tracking, you know, Mickey Rock. Absolutely, yeah, that was yeah. something I discussed very much with uh, 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 Darren's photography, yeah, um, you know, that, that scene. And, you know, I think that uh, uh, Matthew Libertique and, you know, Darren Aronofsky, they, yeah, they do a good trading in following characters, <laughs> you know, uh, where they're going, you know, with some nice hand of work. Very cool. Well, we, we think, you know, thoroughly impressed by the film. I think it's, I think it's great. I wish you heaps of luck with it. Thanks for coming by and spending a few minutes with us. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers.